Okay, let's talk about quarterback play. James Graham made his first career start at North Carolina. He was 11 for 24, 171 yards, two touchdowns, two picks. What do you expect for him Saturday at Duke? I like to think that he'll have uh, a, a, another game where he looks pretty good. I mean, they've been kind of keeping it kind of like it's a secret of who's going to be the permanent starter. I'm not sure if we'll ever see or hear who's going to be the permanent starter uh, for, for, for Georgia Tech, or even if there will be one, let alone one being named. Uh, the question was asked to, uh, to Jeff Collins uh, multiple times. You see him thinking basketball, thinking John Collins. The question was asked about to Jeff Collins about the starting position. He said, we just don't operate that way. We don't talk about who starting players are going to be for you know, the quarterback position, let alone for any other position. Uh, I think he seems a little bit fed up. And, you know, I mean, he's a football coach. you got to understand that. You know, people are gonna have you know uh, want answers to questions. And exactly. That's the biggest ones. The, you know, so so you gotta. He has to be able to understand that. Um, but it just doesn't seem like they really have one in stone. I personally think uh, that Tobias uh, Tobias Oliver is the best option, but he hasn't necessarily gone in there and shown that they can win a ton of football games. This team is one and four for a reason. They're getting ready to play. You know, they just finished playing one team on Tobacco Road. Get ready to play another one in the Duke team. It's not a bad team. This isn't the Duke football alone. People just know Duke to be a basketball program. I'm not going to say that you know they're an elite football program by any stretch of the imagination, but they're not the same Duke football team that we're used to seeing. You know, leading up to the game, I think that they played. Uh, I think Johnny Manziel down at the Dome some quite a few years ago. Uh, so you know, you, you really have to have that respect for. Yeah, that's what I was about to say, at least for the first half. <laughs> Okay, Duke, I want to talk about the Duke a little bit. Um, Dave, Daniel Jones, obviously with the Giants, he was their star quarterback. What do you know about Quentin Harris? He has 11 touchdowns. I know this wasn't on script. He has four picks. He also leads the team in rushing. To me, I look at Duke, I don't think they're that good of a football team. Obviously, you said they're not the team they were uh, maybe a couple years ago. I think this is a winnable game for Georgia Tech, or at least could hang around. Obviously, this is their best player. He gets it done on the ground as well, too. What does Georgia Tech need to do defensively? Do they need to corral and focus on him? Is there any other guys they need to really worry about on this Duke's offense? I don't see it. I think Harris is the guy they need to zone in on. Do you agree, or is there somebody else maybe I'm overlooking? Yeah, I really think that Harris is the guy. I mean, you got to start at the head. you got to start with the guy that's quarterback of the team. you got to start with the guy that's going to get all the praise if the, you know, if, if teams win, he's going to get, you know, all of uh, the scrutiny at the time if, if, the, if the team loses. I mean, he's a guy that Harris is a guy that's uh, very agile, very mobile, likes to move around and can use his feet. That's not the prototypical quarterback that do usually recruits. Uh, within their football program, but you know, it's easy for us to say, yeah, it's a very winnable game. Well, we said the exact same thing when they played the Citadel. We said the exact same thing when they played Temple. We said that, you know, I mean, I know a lot of people probably didn't say, you know, North Carolina, especially after North Carolina only lost last week to Clemson by just one point. True. But prior to that, going into uh, the, the, the season, I thought that it was a very winnable game. I had actually Georgia Tech beating uh, 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 North Carolina in that particular game and then losing to Duke uh, on the road, but nonetheless, it just, we're, we're, that, that's why it's football. We learn so much about different teams throughout the season. I thought that this would be a 6-6 six and six, uh, Georgia Tech football team at the end of the year going to the bowl game at very worst-case scenario. 
uh, a five and seven kind of team. They don't look like they're even about to come close to sniffing that. So again, like I said, they got their work cut out for them. They're gonna play Duke. Is it, is it impossible? No. But is it winnable? I mean, of course it's a winnable game, but I'm, I'm not going to take them to beat this Duke football team, especially considering the way that they've been playing. And in addition to that, the game that I went to in the first game of the season, Duke and Alabama, the way that they held their own, it really impressed me in the first half. Appreciate it. Deshaun Tate, basketball analyst, now football analyst covering Georgia Tech football. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Before you go, give me a score to this game. You heard it from Deshaun Tate. Go check him out. Tate's take. Deshaun, tell us all where we could find you at. Tell them what they need to go check in on because we know there's not that many people in the game who know basketball better than you. And shoot, the way you're covering football right now, same as football. Okay, appreciate it. Jansen Harris here with Deshaun Tate.